Morning everybody. Roger says hey. As you can see, he's got a new hat, and I've got my coffee. We're going to learn a little bit more about Australia today and one of its hats. So if you guys have seen my video on Anzac Day, you know that I had a question about the different hats that the soldiers were wearing in that video. Of course, I'd seen the hat, you know, the one with the uh, the brim that's tucked up. I've seen that in our own American history. We've had in the past soldiers wearing those types of hats. Teddy Roosevelt comes to mind. So I don't know if we kind of took that from Australia and adopted it for our own use, you know, or what the history is behind it. So that is why we are going to be watching this video today because I'm kind of interested in like uniform forms for some weird reason. <laughs> If you guys have seen my Napoleon videos, you know that I kind of like gushed over the British uniforms a bit in that and just had, you know, questions in general about the uniforms of that, of that period. So there's something like I've always just been drawn to military uniforms, especially if they're really sharp looking. But all of you guys in the comments of my Anzac Day video did let me know that this was called a slouch hat, which I had not really heard of that term before. I've seen the hat around, but I didn't know exactly what it was called. So I am looking forward to learning a little bit more about this kind of like, I think a unique uniform piece and hopefully I'll learn a little bit more about the Australian military as well and I don't know if they'll talk about Anzac Day in this or not because I have a feeling that this hat was worn in a lot more circumstances than World War One. and in fact you guys might still actually wear this hat to this day but I think somebody told me that our U.S. Marines have this hat as well at least the drill sergeants do but they don't curl the the side up so let's go ahead and let's learn about a hat. <laughs> Hi, I'm the History Guy, and if you didn't know, in addition to our YouTube channel, we also have a page on Patreon, where for just $3 a month, you can help support the work of the History Guy. And one of the things you get for sponsoring us on Patreon is one exclusive video a month that's exclusive to patrons on Patreon, which for the last year has been a series on the History Guy's hat collection. And occasionally, like today, we're able to bring you an older version of one of those to the YouTube audience. Today I'm going to talk about a hat that's become so iconic that it represents an entire nation, a nation whose military served with distinction in the great conflicts there of the 20th Spina. century. Enjoy the episode, and if you do, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Go, this go is a hat patron. that is officially called khaki fur felt, or KFF, but it's generally referred to as a slouch hat. And characteristic of slouch hats, it has a wide brim. It's pinned up on one side, this one on the left, though sometimes they are pinned up on the right. And while you would think that the slouch hat is really defined by the characteristic pinned up side, it's actually named for the other side, which slouches oh. down. And the hat is sometimes oh. worn unpinned and would still be called a, a slouch hat. This particular hat happens to be Australian, which is the army that is most associated with the slouch hat, but the history goes back okay. farther than that. Okay. The term slouch hat is actually not clearly defined, and the slouch hat can be used to refer to almost any wide-brimmed hat, especially if it's worn at an angle. In fact, the familiar hat styles known as tricorns and bicorns, both types of cocked hat, were simply broad-brimmed hats, purportedly first used by the Spanish during the Eighty Years' War. Broad-brimmed hats were simple, protected against both sun and rain. Over time, the styles change as the sides begin to be pinned up, usually to facilitate rifle drill. A bicorn is pinned on two sides. Is that what that hat is? I've seen it on a lot of colonial, you know, movies and, and TV shows, and then of course in pictures and stuff before. I've seen it, that, that triangular hat. I didn't know, I thought it was just designed that way. I didn't know that the sides were pinned up like that. Huh. Interesting. Sides begin to be pinned up, usually to facilitate rifle drill. A bicorn is pinned on two sides, and a tricorn on three. Oh, and using really? That nomenclature, then My mind is being blown about hats right now. All of these I've seen in, in like tons of things, I did not know that they had flat brims and they were just pinned up. I thought that they were just specially designed hats to look like that. In using that nomenclature, then a slouch hat could be called a unicorn, because it's really nothing more than a bicorn or a tricorn that's only pinned up on one side. Early examples of a cocked hat pinned on only one side were the Cavaliers of King Charles I during the English Civil War, who preferred a fancy cocked hat pinned on one side, a style that was also sometimes used by the famous French Musketeers of the Guard, so colorfully described by Alexander Dumas. During yeah. the Napoleonic Wars, the a high black hat pinned on one side was most popularized by the Austrian army, 
Huh. While the design was used by some line regiments, it was most commonly used by Jaegers, a term which literally means hunter, but in the military which referred to light infantry, skirmishers, scouts, or riflemen. The Austrians called the hat a Korshut, and the Korshut was usually black with a high crown and a feather cockade. There was often a brass plaque with a unit designation in the front. It is unclear, however, where the, the Korshut inspired the modern slouch hat. In 1852, Lahus Kossuth, a deposed leader from Hungary, visited the United States, where he was greeted with wide acclaim. Kossuth has a complex legacy, but Americans saw him as a fighter for freedom and democratic values. He had hoped to gain U.S. backing for further actions in Europe, but was ultimately unsuccessful. What he did do was tour the nation with a soft, wide-brimmed hat that became rather popular. The Kossuth hat, which was also called a slouch hat, again because of the soft, slouching brim, was commonly used by soldiers on both sides of the U.S. Civil War, although more commonly by the Confederates. The really? Why have I not seen that before? Like, one of my favorite movies is Gettysburg, which is about, you know, the Gettysburg Battle of the Civil War. And I've seen, you know, I've, I've studied the Civil War. I've n I don't recall, I mean, maybe I just wasn't paying attention, but I don't recall soldiers wearing hats like this. Huh. Now I'm going to have to pay attention. Like, when I go back and look at pictures from that time period, I'm going to have to, like, pay attention to the hats. I had no idea that this was a, was a thing. The Civil War slouch hat was only rarely wear worn with a side pin, however, and the term was used to refer to almost any hat that wasn't a capy, or at least any with a brim all around, even if the brim was not particularly wide. Separately, the official U.S. infantry dress hat at the beginning of the Civil War was a high-crowned, wide-brimmed, black felt hat commonly called a hardy hat, after William J. Hardy, who had been Commandant of Cadets at West Point. The hardy hat was pinned on one side to allow rifle drill, on the right side for cavalry and artillery, and on the left for infantry. The hat had a wool cord whose color denoted branch of service. The hardy hat was worn by both sides during the war, and Hardy himself served with the Confederate Army. Hmm. However, the hat was considered hot and uncomfortable, and not widely worn. One notable exception, however, was the Iron Brigade, comprised of soldiers raised in the western states of Wisconsin, Indiana, and Michigan. The you know, I guess I've seen these pictures before. I just did not pay any attention to the types of hats that they were wearing. When I think of the Civil War, I think of, like, the more cap-brimmed uh, style with, like, the, sh the I don't know, just shorter top. Um, that's what I think when I think of the Civil War. I would have never thought about hats like this, but I guess I've seen these. I had to have seen these at some points. I just, this is just like, I didn't expect this video to blow my mind like, like this, but it is. The Iron Brigade wore uniforms more closely resembling the dress uniform than most other Union regiments. That uniform included the hardy hat, which by some stories was originally issued in error, but adopted as it gave the brigade a unique look, and the tall crown made the soldiers look taller and more imposing. The brigade was, in fact, sometimes called the Black Hat Brigade because of the hardy hat. I've Although it reportedly was given its more famous name by Major General George McClellan, whom, after seeing them pushing back Confederate forces at the September 1862 Battle of South Mountain, remarked that they must be made of iron. The Iron Brigade distinguished themselves throughout the war, but particularly so at the Battle of Gettysburg. Although the hardy hat was never apparently called a slouch hat, its design was actually much more similar to a modern slouch hat than the hats that were called slouch hats during the Civil War. The use of the slouch hat continued into the Indian Wars, where slouch hats were regulation wear for both officers and enlisted men, although the hat was only very occasionally soon worn with one side pinned up. The hat, which in the form of a Stetson cowboy hat is still often seen worn as unofficial headgear for air cavalry units, carried over into the war with Spain, where the hat was famously worn in the traditional slouch hat style, with the less left brim pinned up by the commander of the United States, 1st Volunteer Cavalry. Is that Theodore Roosevelt? That looks like him to me. Uh, also, it's so weird to me that they call the air, they have air cavalry, because I just associate cavalry with horses, and it's just, why, why even use the term in the air? Maybe cavalry, maybe cavalry has a different meaning. I just thought it meant, uh, like, horse, like, horse, soldiers on horses. But maybe it's, it's, the cavalry means something entirely different than that, and so it can be applied to other things as well. Huh. Yeah, like a lot of things that uh, I thought I knew are just being flipped upside down in my head right now with this video. <laughs>
with this video. I thought it was going to be a very benign video learning about hats, but um, I'm actually learning a lot of history here that I had no idea about. Wow. But again, it's not clear whether the modern slouch hat was derived in any way from these other military designs because, in fact, it's a really simple design that's very practical, especially in hot or jungle climates. And in fact, the hat that is most associated with Australia today was imported from Asia. Really? Australia got its iconic hat from an officer named Thomas Price, who was born in Tasmania and served with the British Indian Army in the 1860s. During his service with the Indian Army, he was seconded as a police superintendent in Burma, where the police used a simple wide brim hat pinned up on one side. Some police units in India still utilize the slouch hat today. Price recognized the simple utility of a slouch hat. He retired in 1883 with the rank of lieutenant colonel and settled in the colony of Victoria in Australia. The colony had a small semi-professional defense force that was separate from the British Army. He was given a commission in the Victorian military force and in 1885 raised a regiment of mounted rifles. Raised from rural areas of Victoria, the Victorian mounted rifles required recruits to bring their own horse. With the Victorian mounted rifles, Price brought the idea of light horse, quickly mobile infantry well suited for the defense of a frontier to the military in Australia. While Victorian forces at the time generally wore a blue uniform, Price got permission to uniform the mounted rifles in khaki, a movement that was gradually being adopted throughout the empire. Included in that uniform was the slouch hat, an idea borrowed from his days in Burma and a design that would eventually come to characterize the armed forces of Australia. In December 1890, the military com commanders of the then separate Australian colonies prior to the Federation of Australia agreed that all Australian forces, with the exception of the artillery, would wear the slouch hat. It was to be looped up on one side, Victoria and Tasmania on the right, and the other colonies, later states, on the left. The reason for pinning on different sides had to do with the various rifle drills used, as the pinning was generally for the purpose of slinging a rifle without knocking off the hat. In October 1889, long-standing tensions and conflicts over the control of resources and mines boiled over into the Second Boer War between the British Empire and the two Boer Republics of the Transvaal and the Orange Free State. The Boers initially had an advantage in that British troops in South Africa were largely infantry, while the Boers were natural horsemen, making the Boer commandos highly effective, like cavalry. The mobility of their cavalry, as their, well as their high-quality Mauser rifles and their skilled marksmanship, contributed to their initial success in the conflict. While Britain was slow to realize how many troops would be needed in the largest and deadliest of the Victorian wars, they quickly recognized the need for mobile units to counter the Boers. I actually have no idea what he's even referring to right now. He said something about World War II, but this doesn't look like World War II to me. These, these pictures he's showing. I don't know, maybe it is. Yeah, so this is just Australian history, I think, that I'd, I'm just completely unaware of. You guys, let me know what exactly he's talking about, because um, that is something that I would like to look into a little bit more. While many of these units were recruited from South Africa, Australia offered an obvious solution as well. The climate and terrain of Australia was similar to that of South Africa. Much like the Boers, many Australians were recruited from rural areas, where they were skilled at horsemanship. And thanks to Colonel Tom Price, Australia had a regiment of highly skilled light cavalry. And also thanks to Tom Price, those regiments were largely equipped with slouch hats. Price himself served in the war, commanding the second Victorian contingent between 1900 and 1902. Okay, yeah, this is definitely not World War II then. This is the turn of the century. Vict Victorian... Victorian War? Those regiments were largely equipped with slouch hats. Price himself served in the war, commanding the second Victorian contingent between 1900 and 1902. Not the Victorian War, but I don't, I'm not sure which war he's talking about. I know he just said it a few minutes ago, but I forgot what it was. At the outbreak of hostilities, Britain was already calling for volunteers from Australia, including the New South Wales Lancers. The Lancers were actually in training in England when the war started and were among the first troops to arrive in South Africa. Australian units and local South African units, including Australian volunteers, were largely either like cavalry or mounted infantry. They were highly effective in the Boer War, where their bushcraft, marksmanship, and horsemanship made them an effective counter to the Boers. Australians played significant roles, both in the defeat of the Boer armies in the field and the bloody guerrilla war that followed. While the Second Boer War was a place where the distinctive slouch hat became associated with Australian forces, the style was more widely used, for example by units from New Zealand, which also fielded almost exclusively mounted rifle units in the conflict. Canadian mounted infantry, like the Canadian Mounted Rifles and the Royal Canadian Dragoons, 
and was common for both colonial units, such as the British South Africa Police and the Bushveld Carboneers, which was recruited from him in South Africa, but was nonetheless made up of about 40% Australians. Okay, so for what, what I'm getting from this is this is a war, the, the Boer War that's happening in so, uh, South Africa, and Britain is involved in it, but it looks like they're, they're also using some of the Commonwealth countries' uh, troops to fight as well, so Australia, New Zealand, Canada, uh, down in Africa. Yeah, so this is, um, I think this is a distinction between uh, perhaps the United States and the rest of the Anglosphere is that the rest of the Anglosphere, I think, is a little bit more involved with Britain's military campaigns than we are over here. We had kind of like our own stuff going on. I think the uh, Spanish-American War was happening around this time over here. So we were not really involved in Africa like these other these other countries so when it comes to african in african history um because other than like the whole slavery thing uh the u.s just is not really uh we don't really have much of a history there i don't think um not like not like britain and canada and australia apparently do so uh i'm i'm very ignorant about uh, all of the, the stuff that happened in Africa. Like my video yesterday with the um, Euros 2020, there was a reference to the French colonization in Africa and what they did there, and I'm just oblivious to that too. So we just don't learn about that over here at all. We don't learn about that at all over here in, in history. It's because we don't, we're, we just weren't involved in it. So, so it's not taught. At least I don't think we were involved in it. I just, I don't, I can't recall like ever hearing about us being involved in Africa, at least during this time period. I know we've had like more modern things happen in Africa, but it's just interesting to, to see the differences between like the, the U.S. is so similar to Britain and Canada and Australia in a lot of ways, but we have very different affiliations and history as well. The slouch hat was also used by British units who either saw the design's utility or were issued slouch hats because there was a shortage of standard cork British pith helmets. Two British units, the Royal East Kent Mounted Rifles and the Imperial Yeomanry, retained the slouch hat for brief periods following the war, although their use had been discontinued by British units before the Great War. For their part, the Boers, who did not typically wear standard uniforms, very often wore soft, wide-brim hats, sometimes pinned on one side in the slouch hat style. By the coming of the Great War, South Hats were a standard part of the Australian uniform for the more than 420,000 Australian troops who served. Wow, look at that picture. New Zealand cavalry units also used the South Hat, although New Zealand infantry was instead issued the similar campaign hat. But Australia wasn't the only army using the South Hat. The Imperial German Schutztruppe, or Colonial Protection Force, that protected colonies in Africa, the Indian Ocean, and the Pacific, used a pith helmet, but also wore South Hats as an alternative, as did German colonial police. Thus, the slouch hat was common in the Africa theater. The German slouch hat was pinned relatively high on the right side and was famously worn by the charismatic commander of German forces in the East Africa campaign, Paul Emil von Leto Vorbach, popularly called the Lion of Africa. In a unique piece of history, the slouch hat was favored by Irish volunteers during the 1916 Easter Rising, an armed insurrection by Irish Republicans intended to establish an independent Irish Republic. The uprising lasted six days, resulted in nearly 500 deaths. Although the rising itself was put down quickly, the British response and subsequent actions shifted public opinion away from home rule. The rising was seen as the beginning of the Irish Revolutionary Period. The hat was again worn by Australian troops, as well as other Allied troops in the China-Burma-India theater in the Second World War. The hat was standard issue for soldiers of the Dutch East Indies Army and similar Terai hat or Gurkha hat, which is not worn pinned up but is worn at such an angle that the hat touches the right ear and thus is notably slouched, is traditionally worn by troops from Nepal called Gurkhas. Huh. Okay, so he just said that the Australians were involved in China, India, and Burma in World War II. Again, very, very different uh, history. The U.S. was... I mean, we, we were in the Pacific Theater in, in with Japan, but we are not taught what happened in China or India, really, in World War II, because we, again, were not, I don't think, involved very much, at least, in that stuff. So, what we learn over here in World War II is the European Theater and the Pacific Theater with the Japanese, the India and China, 
all of those guys get left out. Africa also gets left out to a certain extent. So it's just because our, our country, the U.S., does not have the same history as, like, maybe, um, you know, the British and the Australians do, even in World War II. Like, even though we fought alongside each other, I know that we fought with Australia in the Pacific and the British in the European theater. Uh, the, you guys, Australia and Britain, were still up to things in other parts of the world that we were not, I feel like, involved in. But again, like, I don't know the full history, so maybe I'm talking very ignorantly here about it. Maybe the U.S. was involved in some of these things, and I just don't know about it, because... You know, I just, I've never heard about it before. Both the Terai hat and the more traditional slouch hat were used by the Long Range Penetration Group under General Ord Wingate in the Burma Theater, popularly called the Chindits. and was also informally used by American troops in the theater, such as OSS Detachment 101 and the 1st Air Commando Group. The slouch hat is still worn as a ceremonial headdress for units of the Australian Army, Air Force, and occasionally Navy, as well as for general duties for some regiments. Today, the hat is worn pinned up on the left for ceremonial dress, but with the brim down for general duties. Okay. The hat has a distinctive unit color patch, a patch of colored cloth that represents a unit on the right, and a corps or regiment badge placed on the front. The hat has a puggery or cloth wrap. The puggery originated in India and has the purpose of insulation. Historically, the color of the puggery has been used to denote unit identity or branch. The current Australian slouch hat has seven folds in the puggery, six to symbolize the six states, and the seventh represents Australia's territories. Oh, really? Some Australian cavalry units still also wear an emu feather pinned with the fold. The feather harkens back to the First World War, when light horsemen would chase down an emu on horseback and pluck a feather from them. Oh, Proof okay. of exceptional horsemanship. <laughs> I thought that they were going to, like, kill it and then, like, defeather it or something. That's, that's good. Plucking a little feather is, um, okay. One interesting thing about the Australian sun hat is that they have this badge on the side where it's pinned up. This is called the Rising Sun Badge, but it's actually called the General Service Badge. And the General Service Badge changed over time. So by looking at the General Service Badge, you can get a guess on the age of the badge and the age of the hat. So for example, this General Service Badge says Australian Military Forces, which means it came after 1949. Prior to that, it would have said Australian Commonwealth Forces. But there's also a crown on the badge right here, and this particular crown is the St. Edward's crown, not the King's crown, which means that this hat was made at least after 1954, because that crown was changed in 1954 to celebrate the coronation of Queen Elizabeth, which happened in 1952. And all that tells me is that this is a badge that was used somewhere between 1954 and 1969, and that fits with what it says inside the hat, where there's actually a label that says that this was made by the Dunkerley Limited Company in 1956, size okay. 6. And seven eighths. Which, or you can just look inside the hat and see what the date is. <laughs> which means that this particular hat came into service just a little bit too late to have served in the Korean conflict. The slouch hat has a long and storied history. It's treated with great respect in Australia and is a reminder of the distinguished history of the Australian military. Its iconic design is more to practical value, still used by various police forces, usually in tropical climates. It is still used by the U.S. military today for female drill sergeants in the Army and Air Force. Oh, I have seen that, actually, and I just did not, I didn't compute slouch hat. But yes, I have seen, I have seen the female drill sergeants wearing this in various, you know, videos and contexts and stuff. Interesting, though, that the, only the females wear it. No collection of military headgear would be complete without an Australian military slouch hat, and I am proud to be a steward of this historical artifact. All right, well, very interesting video, actually. I wasn't sure exactly how, like, engaging this would be when I first looked at it, but um, it actually ended up being very, very informative, and I learned a lot. It's also really interesting to me that the slouch hat, which I thought was going to be more distinctly Australian, has actually been used throughout the world by a lot of different countries, a lot of different militaries, in a lot of different places. But for some reason, it became synonymous with Australia. I wish it had kind of like talked a little bit more about that and why exactly it did become synonymous with Australia. Maybe because they formally adopted it as part of their uniform, and maybe other countries didn't quite do that. But it it is a very unique looking hat and it looks pretty good too like I like the look of it and I had no idea that the folds in the um, the wrap around it had any sort of significance I just thought it was a piece of cloth I would have never thought in a million years about the number of folds in it so that's kind of a cool little 
tidbit of information. So yeah, thanks so much for recommending this video. Um, I know it wasn't 100% about Australia, but um, I think it was important to kind of get like a full history of the hat. But it's really cool that Australia has kind of adopted it as kind of like their own hat, you know, in a way. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you haven't done that yet. And you can also check out my social media and Discord links in the description and in my pinned comment if you're interested in any of that stuff. Um, I do have more Australia videos planned for the very near future, so you'll want to stick around for that. Uh, Roger here and I thank you guys for watching, and we will see you next time.